Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play The Occult Chronicles. In the last episode, we explored more of the first floor of the mansion and turned in a few quests, beating up a few haunted pieces of furniture in the process and or communicating with such. Doctor Whom the Second. So far, it's looking pretty good in terms of psychic talents or magical talents, if nothing else. With four swords, three cups, six wands, and seven pentacles to his name. We've taken our second and final skill card as mechanical as a mechanical device specialist. We have acquired all of the bones required to be able to utilize any items that require us to have them in terms of our stats. So swords, cups, wands, and pentacles. We've acquired all the clue tokens I believe are available down here at the first floor. And I have a few more quests that we are looking to turn in, or rather finish. For our equipment, we have Burst of Speed, with a few extra points of courage earned during the last episode. We'll probably never use it unless we're forced to fight something physically, which might be the case in the basement because I did very little modding of the things down there. We have Still Dominate and Toolkit with nothing else acquired. We've picked up the Everlasting Chalice, which is giving us plus one pentacles and allows us to cure wounds if we get any. And we have the Touch of Paralysis, which allows us to swap a card in our hand with a unrevealed trick card on the board, then us get rid of, let's say, an ace for hopefully something better. And we have two Arcana cards, the Magician, which is also earning us plus two pentacles, and Strength, which is plus one swords. When we play Strength, we also replenish all the ammunition for every single gun we have in our inventory, if we have any. Not bad, though we're going to be holding on to those two for quite some time as they give us the stat bonuses that we need. We have no new edges, but we did pick up an edge upgrade for Verbal Intuition, giving us one more card for all Persuasion or Deception challenges. <coughs> Alright, and when we left off, I also have five experience tokens to place. Why don't... Oh, wow, we can improve wands up a point over here for our normal background, too, huh? Why don't we take a... I either want a... I'm thinking a lock device edge. Yeah, let's use a lock or device edge next. Master Lockpick is useful. X is attracted from the difficulty of picking locks. More tricks. X, additional unrevealed tricks are placed on them. Uh, I don't really care about that. You're the value of your... I don't care about high digit dexterity. Feel the tumbler. Any initial trick card placed on the board for any lock challenge that is not a face card is bumped down X. So that makes it a little... You don't care. Initial card draw for any lock challenge must include at least X face cards. So we're guaranteed to start with a face card if we have Master Scrubber. I do tend to like Twerk Sense because I can see I, it scries cards. What that means is that they're translucent, so I can actually see the value that it has. I, I very much like this, and we're going to pick this again this time around too. At the beginning of any lock challenge, X random tricks placed on the board are in a scryed state where X is the level of the edge. One more point of experience. Let's grab a... a wand point and see if maybe Cups is here after we increase the wands again. Wait, I thought this said plus one pentacles before. Now it says plus one wands again? No. Oh. Wait. I'm super confused. I thought this... I thought for some reason I chose... Okay, ignore me. I'm 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 going insane. <laughs> this game is chipping at the edges of my sanity. All right, we revealed the back of the house. This is a very dangerous area. There's some nasty traps back here, and a few encounters back here are stronger than they are inside the house. I did not do any modding for the creatures that will tend to bother us back here either, which means we have to actually physically fight them, which means that this could go bad for us very quickly. 
We're not likely to find the robot back here, but we might find some witches. So I think we will go back here and look for the witch circle. You see a shotgun almost at the same time that you feel the trip wire against your foot, but it's too late. Boom. All right, well, we have a better chance to run for it. You decide to keep moving as fast as you can and launch yourself into a sprint. You just hope the trap wasn't set up with lead with a lead on the aim. Knight of Cups, Queen of Wands are our high cards with two pages. It's promising. It seems thematic that we use Burst of Speed here, right? Roll one bone and then select X non-face cards in hand where X is the number of cups rolled and bump their card values up plus Y, where Y is your cup's attribute plus X. Then draw a card. So we'll be improving a bunch of other cups cards and one pentacle card. I still think we do it. It makes sense thematically. But we rolled higher than our cups so that the feat fails. Most of the time we use that, if we're going to fail. We still consume the courage though to use it. Yeah, I don't, I don't like how that's balanced either. This is a trap. We don't want to fail it. And we didn't. Thankfully. You are faster than speeding buckshot. Superman would be proud. You see the forms of several humans in the gloom ahead. But before you can evade them, the leader steps forward. He doesn't seem intent on talking. His goons from up behind him. And from the look of them, they have probably been hired to guard the grounds. By whom and for what purpose, you have no idea. And something just doesn't feel right about them, now that you've gotten a closer look. So we... Oh, wow. Well, fleeing is almost as bad as fighting. Not... Actually, it's worse than fighting. Yeah, so I guess we stick out and fight them. You decide to take them all off guard and make the first move. You launch an attack at their leader. A uh, page of swords and two eights are high cards. We could use dominate. Let's use it. We gain six points, so we win the challenge. Just like that. That's a good thing we did. We would have lost the challenge otherwise. You take care of the leader and the group falls apart. Looking over their bodies, you can't find any identification. They almost look like they were under some type of mind control, but you can't be certain. We have no gun. We still have no gun. Hmm. We'll check this one. Something in the middle of the gazebo. And on the other side of it guarding the door. You see the soft glow of a fire. As you approach it, you can recognize the outline of, cauldron, of a cauldron sitting on top of it. Steam rises from it, indicating that its contents are being brought to a boil. You suddenly feel very uneasy. There is a spell at work here. You focus your mind to shrug off its effects, but you begin to feel hazy and drunk. Three pairs of gl glowing green eyes stare out at you from around the cauldron. Walking through the witch's ritual and beholding their hypnotic gaze has put you at a disadvantage, and you fight to keep your sanity. King of Swords, Knight of Wands are our high cards. What are the odds the Page of Wands is here? It's not very good, so we'll play the Knight to take the three. There might be a better swords card, so I'll play our seven on the two of swords. Uh, there wasn't. Your mind is strong. You stand defiantly and stare back and stare them back down. You've come across three Cenarian witches. You sense the presence of the horned god nearby. The witches have gone back to their ritual. You wonder why they would treat your intrusion so lightly. You consider your options carefully. These creatures are undoubtedly powerful, and the ritual centering around the cauldron must only strengthen them and the power that they draw from the horned god. You sense that they have left you alone for a reason. You are not certain if it's due to the fact that they have completely discounted any threat that you could muster, or that they somehow want you to make contact. King of Pentacles, Queen of Swords are our high cards. Decent hand. Uh, 
Well, if we don't get a okay, let's say if we don't get a if we don't get a pentacles or a, or a sword scar, we won't be a, we won't be so lucky. We do win the challenge. Wow. You step forward and address them. They seem eager to talk with you. The witches cackle and fix their gazes upon you with their <coughs> green glowing eyes. Then, alternating words, as if <coughs> three were sharing the same mind, you hear them speak. Greetings, mortal. Although you and I would normally be at odds, I have an offer to make you that should suit us both. My heralds cannot enter the mansion, as it is warded against them. Inside is a book that I require. Bring it to my heralds, and I will stand aside from interfering with your mission. I might even help you. I normally wouldn't go out here, but because we're not on a time limit, I can risk being a little braver. Oh, the stables. We could fight a elder thing, is that right? No. A child of the black goat with a thousand young could be in here. There likely isn't a clue token, but I so rarely am out here. We'll take the risk. A hungry young one. This is the thing I meant. One of the better pictures, I think, for this game, too. You see the only, only the slightest movement of the tentacled limbs camouflaged against its background. It springs its trap. The creature is a sickening mound of flesh, appendages, and oozing slime. You're caught off guard, and the smell of the creature is overwhelming as well. King of Pentacles, Page of Wands. We have a swords card in our hand. Two. If we don't have to lose the hard challenge, we don't want to. Usually things far worse than this. I've gotten better rewards than nothing, too. The creature seems to be covered in small mouths, each lined with razor-sharp teeth. You recognize it as some member of the Shambler species that roams the plateau of Lumora or another dimension. A sorcerer of some skill must have summoned it here. So we don't have a good chance to run or fight, so that means we fight. I mean, it's, it's basically the same, is that correct? We have arguably have a slightly better chance of running from it. But we'll attack the creature. It hails from another dimension, but it has a, if it, but it has a physical body. Surely it can be destroyed? Oh, King of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. We just need a Pentacles card up here, and we won the challenge. That will help reduce the damage you take if there are none here. But there is. We win. Not by much, but we do win. The creature withstands a tremendous amount of punishment, but eventually it succumbs to its wounds. These things really are tough buggers. There's probably a giant snake, and there's probably no reason for me to walk up here, but let's do it. You see the cold eyes reflecting light in the darkness, and you stop on your tracks. Soon the rest of the creature comes into focus, and you stand there amazed at the size of it. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Or in this case, one very big one. Your eyes widen in horror at the pile of bones that the snake sits upon. This thing is a killer, and you are right to be afraid. We have two queens in our hand. There goes our only pentacles card. We do win the horror challenge, which is always nice to see. Wow, we really win the horror challenge. You've read about specimens like this in the old case files on the Fawcett Amazon expeditions, but you never thought that you would see one. You wonder who or what decided to bring this pet here and why. Well, once again, it's the same type of choice, fleeing or fighting. I think we'll flee. This thing is a monster, not to be trifled with. Ooh. Ten of Cups, Nine of Pentacles are our high cards. Queen of Cups takes one of our cards. We're not going to be able to run, unless we get very lucky. You attempt to turn and run, but it strikes quickly at your leg and grips it within its jaws. Then it somehow manages to get itself wrapped around your torso. You're in trouble now. Uh-oh. Okay, it didn't keep bring us to a new encounter where we're basically dead. So that's good. Let's try running again. 
Knight of Swords, Knight of Cups. Oh, well, there goes our Knight of Swords to the Queen. And we win. You turn and run. Lucky for you, the snake shows no interest in pursuing you. Never flip over cards you get for winning a, a flea. They're only bad cards. You'll get minus courage cards. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me either. Why, why would you choose to do it? All right, yeah, nothing else out here. Oh, out there in the stable. Still something here we haven't seen yet. Zombies! Oh, I like this picture. That's a pretty good picture. You see several shapes shambling towards you with their distinctive slumped shoulder gait. Before you hear the moans and smell the graveyard and stench, you recognize the threat. Zombies. These are outside zombies, so I did not mod this encounter. These things want to rip you apart and feast on your intestines, and that's a very disturbing thought. Intestines, sorry. And we passed the horror challenge, which is good. We've seen things far worse than this. A lone zombie is manageable, but a group of three or more starts to get a little tricky. You wonder if there isn't a necromancer nearby to account for these rather large gatherings. Last verse, same as the first. Go for the head. King of Wands, Queen of Pentacles. We at least reduce the damage we take. Oh, look at that. Hello, Queen of Wands. We have a king to take you and win this challenge. And we actually do very well here. You avoid getting swarmed and dispatch each of the undead creatures in turn. Nice job. And we get three experience points and three life for it. Oh, that's rough. So Mechanical Device Specialist did not give us more than one cops level up. Really wish it would have told me that. Mm -mm, that's not very good. So we are going to have a really difficult time dealing with traps and fleeing challenges. Your attention is drawn to the trunk of a gnarled old tree. A cleft indicates that the tree has been hollowed out and you think that you see something moving inside. It's probably just a squirrel. But as you get closer, you begin to feel uneasy. Suddenly a haunting pair of yellow eyes appears. A strange creature pulls its head out of the cleft in the tree and peers out at you. You freeze in your tracks. This strange creature radiates an aura of ancient nature magic. You sense the work of Pan here, and that scares you. Lots of good swords cards, and uh, pentacles. Look at that hand. Queen, Two queens, two knights. win. Uh, the same text is used for a great many of the horror challenge successes, so I just skip reading reading it. The creature seems to be made of wood and leaves, and might even be part of the tree. You recognize the influence of the god Pan here. He was thought to be merely a legend until the disastrous On expedition of 1919 that was lost in the Nata River Gorge on the... Peloponnese? You suspect this is the some this is some type of herald or harbinger, or perhaps even a priest who delved too far into the mysteries of Pan. You resolve to tread carefully here. The goat god is notorious for his ability to induce panic. So we can't communicate with it. This part of the witch's quest. It's interesting it's right next to it. So we'll flee. It hasn't seemed to want to harm you, but staying in its presence is slowly draining your willpower, and you're already feel fatigued. You said to muster your courage and get out of here while the getting's good. Well, that's not a very good hand to get out of here with. Can we get lucky? You try to turn and run, but the dark sorcery has locked you in its power. You see tremendous hunger keeping you in place. Try that again. We succeed. So we will keep playing. Let's see if five over is an evade success. Your will is stronger than whatever force is seeking to keep you here. You turn and walk away. Evade. So, 
when you try to run from an encounter, if you get a certain number over the target number, you stay in the place where you were, as opposed to stepping back to where you came from. That's called, that's a, an evade, as opposed to a flee. There's no real reason for me to go out here. I can't think of anything out here we actually want to find. But we're not on a time limit, so. Oh, a, a greenhouse? I don't like this at all. That's, this, that can't be any good type of encounter there. <laughs> it's probably the triflids. Man eating plant. You hear a rustling sound and pause to locate it, but it quickly stops. After waiting patiently, you start to move again, only to once more hear a strange rustling. It sounds like a bush being shaken for its berries. Without any warning, a six-foot plant creature leaps out at you. Its tentacle-like vines and roots reach out to entangle your feet. You can't believe what you are seeing. The plant is aggressive, and you're pretty sure it wants to eat you. Page of cups, and then two tens are high cards for this horror challenge. But we don't really care about winning these. We have 36 sanity. I mean, granted, winning is better than losing. Oh, we still manage it somehow. The creature is surprisingly mobile and agile. It's also intent on catching you. You can smell a sickly odor in the air as it releases a bunch of spores. And that can't be good. You remember a case file that you read about it was the 1915 Triffid event that began in Indochina and spread to Sumatra and Malaysia. Agent John Winningham and scores of other operatives were lost. It was supposed to have been contained and all the pods destroyed. Apparently not. Well, I didn't mod this encounter, so we're going to try to fight it. Uh, what, what I mean whenever I say that is that I didn't add an, account, uh, an option to deal with it with sorcery or psychic abilities. Most of the fighting in the game requires you to actually fight physically. And most of the ghosts in the game require you to, psych to fight psychically. But if you're a physical person, that generally means that you can run, but not fight from psychic enemies. And if you're a psychic, good luck trying to fight or run from the creatures, as, as you can see right here. King of Pentacles, Page of Swords. It's not terrible. Oh, wow. And that's the best thing we could see, is a Queen of Pentacles for our king to take. And we get a few more points as well. This thing just doesn't want to die, but you manage to inflict enough damage that it simply doesn't have a choice. One experience point. We'll go for a talisman. Oh, well, it's, that's not really going to help me. Okay. Well, I mean, we can leave the experience point there. We have to now. There, when you take talisman edges, there's a chance that you can get a talisman edge, which will increase a stat for every one type of talisman of that type you possess in your inventory. The only one we have right now is wands, and wands improves our uh, this uh, fire, which improves this attribute, which is not what we care about. We want something that improves our cups or swords, air or earth. I think is what these are. Or water? No water. Uh, air and water. And so without uh, without any of those types of talismans, taking talisman edges would be useful in order to see it, uh, to take it but we won't benefit from it until we get the appropriate talisman in our inventory i'm not stepping in these two spots there's nothing there worth searching we already have three clue tokens and there likely isn't another one back here okay yeah graveyard is a little tougher than the inside of the mansion especially because i didn't mod any i didn't add any new encounters to what you meet back there but we did get the Witch's Quest, which is nice. I'm going to hope we don't have to cross this beam to find the robot. But it could be on the other side of that. Oh, wow. We haven't had the Class 1 Haunting yet. Suddenly you see a dim glow of a formless ghost just ahead of you. It seems to just hang in the air. 
It may be the most basic of spectral creatures, an unformed psychokinetic disturbance, but it's a spirit all the same, and it would frighten any flesh and blood human. Well, we have a great hand for this. Queen of Wands, Knight of Swords? Knight of Cups are high cards. I'm willing to use... Oh, well, what are the odds of pages up here? Not very good. We'll play the Knight. We have Pentacle cards. We have a Three of Pentacles. Oh, we have a Queen of Wands in our hand. Maybe I saw that already. Um... We'll play this seven. In my opinion, the, this game, these challenges become fun when you have a good amount of, like, when you have, like, eight draw and there's eight cards on the board. Because then you can play around a little bit with uh, what you have and try to maybe take a risk of holding on to certain cards. Otherwise, the game, I feel, plays itself most of the time. When you have three cards in hand and four tricks... You're, you're gonna play every card you can that you're that you're able to whether or not it might make sense to hold on to them for example so the only thing manifests itself as a dim ball of light it has no sense of its previous life or existence it wanders hopelessly lost you should exercise caution these haunts cannot be reasoned with and they can be lethal if disturbed so I added getter as an option this is the same difficulty as this normally. So you can see that the game has decided to increase the difficulty of this extremely weak creature by six points in order to make it difficult for us to win the challenge. I cannot disable the AI difficulty balancer in the game. It's part of the actual game engine and I am not able to access that. So alas, we're stuck with it. So both of these are good options then. I guess we'll destroy the ghost, since we do have nine tricks and nine draw. Decide to use your psychic talents to dispel the ghost and send it back to the spirit world. It will most likely resist. Two kings and a knight of pentacles. King of swords and king of pentacles are, are high cards. It's pretty good looking. We will play the king of swords to win the challenge. That's a shame. There was a knight of swords there. was about to accuse the game of not giving me any pentacle cards. It didn't really want to give me that one. Thank you, game. You engage in a psychic duel with the ghost. It turns its mindless anger and desperation against you, but you prevail. You feel that whatever it was before would thank you for the peace you gave it. Give me magic energy, please. Courage is useful, but not as useful as magic energy would have been. Well, we don't need heroic feats because with the three in cups, we can't realistically use them. We have to get super lucky. Well, 50, we have a 50-50 shot of successfully using a feat. So, I guess we'll go for a psychic talent edge? Oh, what am I doing? Don't... Oh, well, we can walk this way. Okay, good. No trap. That's probably the basement, but it might not be. Let's go to the other side of the mansion now. And because we are not playing on a time limit, I don't feel compelled to go to the second floor to do it. So we'll swing past this door and check it really quick. Still the same difficulty that it had been, which is why I checked it very early on rather than leaving it unchecked. Because the game would have made this much more difficult for us. This is a fantastic chance to find this secret door. With only one target failure, we can also risk failing it a few times. So you can get ill omens from this. We don't really want an ill omen. But hopefully we will get a decent hand. King of Swords, Queen of Swords, Queen of Pentacles. That is a decent hand. It's three of Pentacles. I will play the Queen to immediately win the challenge. Queen of Cups takes our three. Take the four with our nine. Ace of Swords. We'll play the King. And we're 12 over, so we're drawing the max number of reward cards we can, which is 7. Oh, but nice. We get even more points. 
You search around the door for anything of note and quickly zero in on some promising locations. After filling around with several bumps and nooks, the mechanism clicks and the door slowly opens. Come on, Aura of Fortune. We are at max sanity. We are not allowed to have more than 40. So every other every card of sanity we draw now just has gone to waste. We do get two more uh, experience points. So let's take a psychic talent edge. Precognition. Whenever you use a psychic talent during a challenge and points are added to your trick taking score as a result, then add X additional points. X level, okay, so this is nice. We would basically gain one extra point so far. Gain extra additional uses of any psychic talents and challenges where they are eligible for uses. Okay, so we could use Dominate twice, for example. Whenever you roll a Wands Bone to determine whether a psychic talent failed, add... Okay, that's not really helpful for us. We don't care about that. I didn't realize that was not an option. Something like this. It's a... It, we'll have to look for her, her, the, the heroic feet edges. Because if we could get something like this that works for cups, that could be really good. Basically, if we had a low Wands score... This adds, uh, wait, is that right? Whenever you roll Wands Bone to determine your excellent, yeah, yeah. So this effectively adds points to your score for determining if you successfully use your uh, psychic talent. If something like this existed for feats, I would take it. Death warning. Whenever psychic pushback is generated from the use of psychic talents, subtract 10% times X of the pushback value for X level of the edge. <coughs> um, the more often you use psychic talents, the worse cards are until you can get something like an instant death or instant insanity card. So you really don't want that much psychic pushback. It's why you don't see me using dominate every single challenge that we're in. Whenever you are successful in a challenge of any type, you have a 2% times X chance of having a major arcana card appear. As one. Of, okay, so that's uh, those are the wild cards that we are, we're earning. If you possess at least one Psychic Talent card, X is attracted from the target level at the start of any Psychic or Combat Challenge. Or Combat Challenge, huh? That could help us in physical battles. Fire starting. If you possess... Okay, this is... You draw extra, extra cards. And this is you add extra tricks. So... You know, I like how simple Precognition is. When we use Dominate, we just get more points. So... I like it. We'll take precognition. And we can actually level it a second time. Okay, that's good too. I would like to get this door open. You've discovered it. So this is the basement. We don't want to stay down here. You've discovered a secret door. It, well, we will eventually, but not at the moment. It blends in almost seamlessly with the dungeon wall, but your keen senses were still able to detect it. Finding it is one thing. Figuring out how to open it is another. Uh, you examine the door and decide that you might be able to figure out how to activate the door. I like these to hand. Queen of Pentacles, Knight of War, and two Knights. We need eight points, though. It's going to be tough to get eight points. Oh, we do manage it without using any of our pentacle cards. And we get over our target number. You search around the door for anything of note to please zero in on some promising locations. After filling around with several bumps and nooks, the mechanism clicks and the door slowly opens. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Let's increase our wands again. Oh, we're not staying down there. There could be a secret door here. There is not. Let's go upstairs. Oh, another class one haunting. All right, we'll once again destroy the ghost. Wow. King of Pentacles, two queens. One of we have every face card for Pentacles in our hand, which is a shame, because that means the odds of there being Pentacles up here is very low. Ace of Swords, Seven of Cups. 
I'll play the 10 and hope we have another better option for our queen up here, cups wise. Well, that was worse, but we still get the same points and win the challenge. Yeah, when you draw a bunch of face cards, especially for the same suit, that's I don't like seeing that because it means that the odds of there being something worthwhile playing them on up here is almost non-existent. You engage in a psychic duel with the ghost. It turns its mindless anger and desperation against you, but you prevail. Two more courage. Well, we have burst of speed. Normally, the grandfather clock is inside this room. It's not today, though. Then back downstairs we go. Is there a secret door here today? There is not. All right, uh, one more room? Ooh. Strange operating room. You hear the taps of its metal legs on the floor, and then you see it emerge from the shadows. A brain bot. Soldier slaves created by the Telesrati from human victims to fight in their interdimensional wars. They are quick, efficient, and merciless. Nothing remains of their past humanity. The thought of it is horrifying. Your eyes wind disbelief as you behold the human brain encased in its robot body. King of Swords, Queen of Cups are our high cards. So at least for the horror check, we'll pass it. Or likely to pass it. And we do so. You've seen these things in action a few times before, and you are confident that you can handle yourself in this situation. Well, let's hope so. I didn't add any modded options for this encounter, so the odds of us being able to fight it is probably not very good. The brain bot seems to be on patrol. You should act quickly before it summons reinforcements. Its weak spot is a motivator underneath its carriage. It's a difficult spot to hit unless you can manage to flip them over. Uh, it's actually easier for us to fight it than the flea, so we will try fighting it. Queen of Swords, Page of Wands. We could use our single touch of Paralyclus, but I'm not gonna. What I would do is put the 10 up here. This way we know the queen could take it. But we will hope there's a good, another swords card up there. And there was. Ooh. The brain bot sparks and sputters as a cerebral, cerebral fluid leaks out of the brain case. So there's a Talos Rathi in this room, then. And this might be a portal generator somewhere here. You're confronted with a creature from some type of horrible nightmare. It towers over seven feet tall and seems covered in a sick, sicky, translucent slime. You can only describe it as a combination of a snail, cucumber, and octopus. You fight to control your revulsion. This thing's not of our world. It must be from another dimension entirely. You feel overcome with dread and a sickening revulsion. Your eyes wind in disbelief as... Oh, I should make sure I don't have any images. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, dread and sucking revulsion. Yes, uh, let's let's resist the horror. FR2. Page of Swords. We have a Knight of Swords. We win the challenge. We've learned that we can earn courage from horror checks. It's not a very good chance, but it does exist. You have no doubt that you can overcome this nightmarish thing that confronts you. After the initial shock of seeing this strange creature passes, you are pretty sure you can identify it. Remember your briefings on the Tanska event of 1908. A portal had been opened by this interdimensional race of aliens known as the Talazrati. An invasion had been foiled by a precursor to the Odd when the portal generator was overloaded. It had been a narrowly won victory. An interdimensional war had followed. This creature must be on a mission to prepare a bridgehead. You can see that right now it is in the process of creating yet another brain bot. An unfortunate victim is strapped down to a dissecting table even now. Well, oh, we, uh, so normally it's not this difficult to use sorcery against it. But once again, I was like pointing out that this is greatly increased because of our high stats in that we have. I still think we use sorcery against it, though. 
With nine tricks and nine draw, even though the target number is too higher, I think I like this. You decide to unleash a surge of sorcerer's energy at the Talisrati. These things can feed on such energy and are excellent sorcerers in their own right, so you know it will be difficult, but you think it's your best chance. Oh, uh, we have almost every single face card from Swords. And then an eight of wands is our next highest card. So hopefully we get some swords up here. No reason not to play the king. Okay, good. You channel everything you have, and despite putting up a good fight, the Thelizrathi ends up in a steaming puddle of goo. You can now get a view of what the Talizrati was working on, and it's truly horrifying. A human victim lies strapped to the table with the top of his skull removed. The brain has been transported to a holding dish, and was in the final stages of being placed into a brain bot. You note that the body has been taken off of its life support and appears to be dead. There will be no going back, even if you had the surgical skill to reverse this. You notice that the Telesrathi was in the process of hooking up a simple voice module to the brain pan holder. If you can complete the circuitry, you might be able to talk with it. Uh, Queen of Cups is the only thing we've only face card, and then we have a ten of wands. So this makes me nervous because it means there's lots of face cards probably up on this board. I do want to win the challenge, so we'll play the queen here, which still doesn't let us win, but the odds are good we will. You seem to have an aptitude for understanding transdimensional alien technology. You have the circuit working in no time. We just defeated this, right? Oh, no, you, no, we didn't. The circuit buzzes to life, and you can talk to, with the victim. It wants to die, but it also wants revenge. It thanks you for stopping the operation. It can't really sense everything that is going on, but it felt its tormentor die. <coughs> its name was Professor Mackin, and it was developing a rocket fuel for the Cranker Corp. His team was ambushed when they followed a strange energy signal that led them to this house. Professor Mackin wants you to find and kill the Talzrathi leader, who is somewhere in the house. His name is Zur. Kill him. And then return with the news so he can die knowing he was avenged. I don't think I've gotten this quest before. Another locked... Ooh. Locked door. We'll make one attempt at this and then we'll call it a session. How's that? You examine the lock mechanism and decide that you might know how to finesse it. Six target difficulty now, game. I hate you for making it so difficult. We do see a four of pentacles up here, thanks to our one edge, which allows us to see scryed cards. So we can win the challenge immediately by playing the king. So we we have, we with that knowledge, we don't have to panic about failing this encounter. And we can play the king now on the seven, which lets us win that challenge, or this challenge. We can now play the two on the six. And on the off chance, this is also a higher pentacle card than the four. We will play the five now. Okay, four overs isn't so bad. The lock opens. You're just as talented with the lock as you thought. Nice, more luck. We can increase our wands again if we want the game to increase the difficulty even more. <laughs> uh, let's take another... Psychic talent. And guys, I think we stop here. So thank you guys for watching. When we come back, we'll start exploring this side of the mansion. And I will see you guys then. Take care, everyone.